So this week we are finalizing the brake stuff on our 1964 Falcon hardtop using a 1974 Maverick master cylinder and Nikop lines that we have put together to make all that work. Why am I holding a bottle of overpriced flavored water that I have ripped the label off of? Well, after the break, we're going to be talking about how this can help you do brake bleeding by yourself, courtesy of Chris Fix. For 45 years, the Miller family and the dedicated staff at Autocrafters have been here helping you to restore your dream Ford. Thank you for your support. Here's to another 45 years of delivering parts for your Falcon, Fairlane, F100, Galaxy, Maverick, and Pinto. All right, so what I want to talk a little bit about today is brake bleeding and a couple of different ways that you can do that. Now, the first method is the oldest method that I know of that I've used for years, and that is the two-man method. So you will have to buy pizza and beer possibly to get this one done. And that is to go and have a friend come over and get in the car, pump the brakes for you uh, to get the pedal to start coming up, so to speak. And then you take and open the bleeder screw up. The pedal goes to the floor. They hold it there. You close the screw and then they do it again until you can get a good firm pedal out of the car. You will always, on all these different systems, do it this way. You'll go from the uh, passenger side rear on an American car, then driver side rear, then passenger side front, and then driver side front. That's just the way it's always done. You're going from the furthest distance from the master cylinder to the shortest distance of the master cylinder for this process. Now what I'm going to talk about is something that can change that for you a little bit. If you work a lot by yourself, there's a couple of different ways you can go at it. And I've got here on the countertop the brake fluid that we're using, which is a DOT 5.1, which is, as we've talked about in the last episode, see the link below me here. This is a glycol-based fluid that you can use on your car. You can also go with a DOT 4 or whatever uh, to bleed the brakes. Now, I have three systems here on the table. I have a Mighty Vac, which is this system right here. And basically what you do is you attach uh, your, your brake system. This goes onto the Mighty Vac. You put about this much fluid in the bottom of it. You have a tube inside of here that goes down into the fluid. And then you vacuum bleed the brakes. In other words, you're back there just pumping away and you pull vacuum on it and you open and close the petcock in order to do that. I'm not going to sit here and completely explain it. You also have a power pressure bleeder, which is the one that's right here. This is from Phoenix Systems. This one is one where you're actually pushing fluid into the calipers and to the master cylinder. Same process that you would use in the other one. So it is a pressure bleeding system. And finally, you have the Chris Fix system which involves that little bottle right there. I'm going to show you in just a second how to build this one. Basically, it's a lot like a uh, vacuum bleeder, but you're working by yourself and you're in the car pumping the brakes, but this becomes the man that turns the screw underneath the car. Basically, this is the, that's what this is going to be about. So we're going to show you how to build this one. Uh, this comes, like I said, straight from Chris Fix. This was a good idea that he had. And Cam's used it a few times. I talked to him about it. He said, this works great. So you should go ahead and try it on the car. So that's what we're going to do today. Now we're going to do a full brake bleed on it because nobody wants to watch somebody bleed all the brakes. But this is what we're going to make next. All right, the nice thing on this is this bottle doesn't even need to be clean. It can have water in it or whatever. I have a bottle of DOT4 brake fluid. Now this brake fluid is old. I don't care about it anymore. I just want to use this as my liquid inside of my container whenever I get everything done. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get a drill bit and my ancient drill here. And I'm going to drill a hole in my cap. Now this drill bit is smaller. This is smaller than the actual tube we're putting in here. It still smells like the stuff that was in it. I don't know if it's going to be too small. Now you wonder why you want to make this hole so much smaller. I don't want to make it a lot smaller, but I want to make it small enough that the hose just doesn't flop out whenever we're bleeding the brakes and cause me to spill brake fluid all over the floor. All right, so I got my tube in there. I'm going to test fit it. I want that uh, tube to go all the way to the bottom of the container. 
I'm over pull it. Tube goes all the way to the bottom of the container. Now I'm going to take and get a small drill bit to make a pressure relief hole. Otherwise, you can explode. You can explode your bottle. Safety third, as I always like to say. It doesn't matter where the hole goes, and that's all you need. Now, you take and put some brake fluid in it. I'm going to put a pretty good amount because I don't want to have a risk of having this come back and have the two maybe get kicked up into the air. You want this to create a vacuum in the system. So the air bubbles can't go back up into it. It's the same principle on the Mighty Vac when you're doing the uh, vacuum bleeding with it. Okay, and the tube goes down inside. And now it's fairly tight. If it does fall over, you're not going to lose any fluid. Now, the next thing is to show you exactly how to do this, because there is one other tip that you'll need to know on bleeding brakes uh, using this kind of a method, or any method, because it's something I've run into on these brakes. One of the biggest tech tips I can give you when doing this kind of stuff is you're going to want to take and get yourself ah, some axle grease, just normal axle grease. This is coastal. It doesn't matter whose it is. And you're going to want to pack some grease around that fitting. Uh, you're going to want to turn it out some. I got it loose. I can get in here on the finger. Turn it out a bit, and I'm going to pack that thing with grease around it. You don't want to get it on the top of the fitting. You want to get it around the threads. I'm going to probably just pull it all the way out because we got to bleed the system anyway. And there's nothing coming out of there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to pack around the threads with some grease. I don't want to get it too high because I don't want to get the grease inside of the system. But you want to pack it pretty good. So that it takes those threads and it seals them off. Um, any fluid seeping out around it. I'm going to put it back in. All right, and that's going to be good for right now. We are getting a little bit of weep on that. That's good. We're seeing some brake fluid come down. Now I'm going to go get the bleeder. And I'm going to show you how to do the Chris Fix bleed. And get the grease off my hands. Ew. All right, now when you're going to do this kind of a method, you want to make sure that you uh, check your fluid after several pumps. You'll do like five, six pumps, and then you'll go check your fluid and then check the bottle to see if you're getting any push. If you're not getting any push, that means that you're probably dealing with a problem in the master cylinder or you have somewhere in the system along the way that's getting air into the line and not allowing it to fully bleed. So I'm going to do about five pumps initially because I'm not sure how this is going to work out. See what we get. Now I'm going to go check the fluid. Back in the hole and we're going to go back and bleed it or press it some more.
pedal's firming up just a tad. And that's good because I wasn't really getting any pressure at all from the pedal before. All right, fresh batch of fluid. We're going to keep moving here. I'm going to take my 10 millimeter and I'm going to tighten this bleeder screw up. I think we are good to go. Yes, I'm using a combination on this because this is a 10 millimeter and I don't own any 10 millimeter flare wrenches. All right, there you go. I know that's not a very long video, but that is exactly the brake bleeding procedure I'm gonna do from now on. <laughs> that's just dang easy. Uh, I'm gonna go through and bleed the rest of these off camera because you know, it's it's doing the same thing at all four corners. Nothing new or different about the rest of it. So do me a favor, folks. Be kind to each other, love on each other, treat each other nice. You guys have a great week, and we'll see you on down the road. Now, the next thing on this car is going to be for me to align it and to uh, do a test with it with the RRS front suspension. If you guys want to see that alignment procedure for the RRS system, please let us know in the comments below. We'll take a look at doing that. Uh, it's a lot easier than aligning a 1964 Falcon for dang sure. So uh, I'd like to be able to show you that because we have all the goodies on the front that make that easier from the strut rod kit all the way out to the, the strut and brake kit itself. So check it out. See you next time.